what would be most useful for you to cover today? Oh, wow. Ooh, um, gosh. Um, I guess um, the idea of, I guess, how would I, how do I increase my speed while maintaining my accuracy? I, because I, you know, it's one thing to, you know, that you're doing the practice and, and I guess not to freeze under pressure mm -hmm. and, you know, you know how you, sometimes you know what to do, but in the circumstance when you're under testing conditions, it's almost like being in a game and being trained to do something. And then sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Things don't always work out and you have to figure out, and once again, how to keep forging ahead. So, yes. So I, yes, go ahead. So you said increasing speed while maintaining accuracy. Yes, because you, with the time constraints is very important. And um, with the LSAT flex, there's going to be three sections. So it's very important to do well, you know, on our three, you have three, that's it. It's not like you have double LR. So it's, it's not going to happen. Right. So each question is worth a little have, bit more. Yes. And that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to articulate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you, once, you, once the test starts, you've got to be ready to dive in. Okay. And keep moving forward. And we'll, we'll cover both sides of this, but the speed and the accuracy, they go hand in hand, right? Obviously, if you could slow down, your accuracy <laughs> could increase. But yes. how could you go fast while maintaining it? Part of that is what I call pattern recognition. Okay. The idea that when you come across a question, you've seen it before. You've seen it That's in a right. different disguise before. That's right. That's right. So That's right. I would encourage you, slow down for now. Take the time to thoroughly understand the patterns of reasoning so that when you come across it in the future, it's truly nothing new. Because I'm, I'm becoming a little bit impatient with myself because I'm like, I've got this list of, of things to do and of, of all the things I want to get through in one day. And I'm like, you know, I'm taking the time to try to understand the correct, the reason why, um, the reason behind my mistakes and my successes. So I'm like, okay, if I got this problem right, it's not good enough for me to just get it right. It might be problematic. I don't know, but I'll, I'll I want to say, okay, why did I get this right? Okay. What, what make these, what made these answer choices wrong? What made this one correct? I do that on every problem I have literally every problem. And I'm like, I am going way too slow. So how many because problems, what percentage of problems are you doing this for? Are you doing this for every problem you attempt? Yes. 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 The only ones I don't do, the only ones I don't do that with are, um, except for, I, I would say in hindsight, thinking about it, the logic games, the orientation question, I don't question it. I move. Uh, but, and let's see, with the, let's see, with the local questions, I move a bit faster, but some, sometimes with the must be true, it must be false, could be true, I'm like, but especially as it relates to logical reasoning, that section, I'm like, okay, why is this right? Why is this wrong? Why is this right? Why is this wrong? Um, and I moved, uh, like on reading comprehension, like things like um, main point questions, I'll just kind of, I'll move. Uh, but things like if I have like an inference question or um, it just, and my mind's going blank right now. I'm, it's I'm, okay. It's okay. It's okay. I, I want to make sure also that we don't get here. too lost in the weeds with this because I think that you're, you're saying some, maybe some you review more than others. Some you have more trouble with than others. And that distinction, those differences yes. right there are really yes. important because that means that you don't need to review everything to the same extent. Okay. Like you said, okay. orientations, you're good. Yeah, I just, I move. You got it. So no need to go further in your analysis of those. Mm -mm. No. Obviously, if we had all the time in the world and you were taking the exam 100 years from now, you could take a year to study each one of the 100 exams in depth. Yes. But we don't have that, right? So we've got to no. make the most of the time that we have, efficiency. Increasing speed while maintaining accuracy is working efficiently. Yes. And you, you hit the nail on the head. So um, I've tried what uh, most of my sessions, if I'm not too worn out, uh, I will, I saw that one of the things that you recommended was meditation. Mm -hmm. I, I do that. <laughs> I do that in the morning and then I'll do it before my LSAT sessions. I didn't, you know, I didn't usually think about 
combining that with the test, but yeah, so now I do, I do that. Uh, I'm using your cheat sheets, which, which helped me uh, in approaching each problem. It really helps me. Um, I'm trying to uh, get in the habit of using the cheat sheets while I'm practicing and then sometimes putting the cheat sheets away and saying, okay, what type of problem is this? Like when I go through my logical reasoning, I'll ask myself, okay, what type of problem is this? Because I feel like that'll help me to approach it a certain way. And if I can't remember how to approach it, I'll go back to your cheat sheets. And I have all of them, by the way. Uh, and I, every time I study, I fill out your cheat sheets and I sit them next to me and I'll, and I'll sit there and I'll go, I'll go through them. Uh, but what would, what would one of the hacks with, with, uh, reading comprehension, one of the most overlooked hacks be that you would say? Well, I think one, by the way, I'm glad you found the cheat sheets helpful. The, the reading comprehension. I did. Awesome. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear that with the reading comprehension. I think a common mistake I see from students is taking too many notes. So I would ask you then, Chris, what, what, what's your level of note taking? What, what kind of notes do you make? What kind of summaries do you make, if any? Um, okay, so my strategy is, is this. So I will go to, um, I try to analyze, um, I don't want to say analyze, summarize better. Summarize uh, each passage and try to figure out the structure and say, okay, why is this paragraph here? And maybe, um, let's say, um, like, I'll, I'll try to, fit the passage together like okay this is a main point but I'll do it in like 10 words or less usually at around six or seven words I don't do a lot of underlining because it just gets really convoluted so I'll say okay what's this one about I'll um you know I'll write in the side write in the side write in the side write in the side but I don't I don't take a whole lot of notes not 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 as many as I used to because I saw that you didn't recommend that we take a lot of notes Great. so I annotate just a little bit um, so that only because when they ask me a question, let's say, um, they'll say, okay, in this line or w in this paragraph, what do they mean about this? Or why did the author do this? Um, I can't, what is the name of that kind of question? Anyway, I'm not going to get caught up in this. Well, like the role of the anyway. statement, right? The role of the statement. Yeah, the role of the statement. Yes. Yeah. See, that's how you're my guy. Yes. That's see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the role of the statement questions. I, I find that helps me go more efficiently. And I, I use your tool in skipping around in, in what you put in the cheat sheets regarding the order in which you should do the questions because it sort of helps you understand the passages you go along. So the cheat sheet really helped me with that, um, with efficiency and, and saying, okay, how do I get the most out of the time and the most out of the questions? So that, that did help. Awesome. So you asked about overlooked strategies. I think you've okay. already got some of the strategies here because you know what to do with the cheat sheets okay. and you also know what not to do in terms of avoiding too much note taking. So yes. Chris, I think for you, honestly, what's going to be the game changer for you is changing your review process so that you're able to go into more depth, reviewing okay. fewer questions in more depth, may, okay. maybe even doing fewer questions as well so that okay. you can review the ones <laughs> you actually attempt in more depth. That's right. That's right. That's right. I try to like, I'm very tenacious and I like to, I don't know, get these tendencies. I don't know. I don't know if it comes from academics and, you know, you, you like to be, you know, one of the top students. And so you believe in doing, trying to do everything to the best of your ability. But in this test taking, it's not a classroom. It's just one shot and you got a few minutes to just to keep moving and use a strategy like Hunger Games and get through it. I like yeah. that book. That's a weird <laughs> analogy, but it's that way. You know, so um, what would be the most overlooked um, hack with uh, lo uh, logical reasoning? We, we could get there, but it's actually something else I'm, I'm hearing coming up here, which okay. is around perfectionism. Do you mind if we talk a little bit about that? We can, because I have that tendency, which, which really helped me uh, in, my mas in both my master's programs. It helped me in undergrad in the honors program, but I don't know. How could perfectionism come into play on the LSAT in both good ways and bad ways? A tendency to ruminate when, when I don't have time. A, to, a tendency to second guess myself. A tendency to be too hard on myself because it's going to destroy, it, 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 it can destroy one's efficacy if you're continually, like, you read the passage and you're like, oh, I've got to understand every word in it. I can't let it go. What's that word? Or... You know, you got the answer in a local question and you're like, well, wait a minute, maybe I, are you, you're doing too many setups. Like one of the things I learned from your cheat sheets is that 
you know, with the orientation questions, use that information to, to build and not feel like I have to do everything. So I think that it can, it can destroy my, my efficiency. It could. And that's why I'm, that's why I brought this up because I, I heard elements of that coming out. And of course I've suffered from it as well at times too, which is why I, I'm, so, I'm so aware of it in others. Sometimes we see in others what we most need to work on ourselves as well. And so okay. I bring, I bring this up because I could see it coming into play in your prep. And I want you to challenge yourself a little bit on it by recognizing it and saying, it's okay to get questions wrong. And I know you okay. just joined the course. And so you'll see inside the course, all the strategies about what to do and what not to do. And you've gotten a little bit of that in the cheat sheet also. So I want to address this. I think it's the bigger thing. It's the bigger okay. thing that would unlock everything else for you. What if okay. you could go ahead and say, I'm fine getting questions wrong. I love getting questions wrong because I get to review those. The ones I get right, I don't look at those again unless they gave me trouble along the way. Okay. 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 I think that's, I think that's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's ingenious actually. It's an epiphany for me because, um, in school we're not, we're not taught to think that way. It's like a win lose, either you're good or you're bad or, you know, but you know, if you look at it with a growth mindset, like you said, and say, okay, every time, I make a mistake. I'm growing. I mean, you're, you you're a teacher, right? What do you tell your students? I tell them the same thing, but I don't take my advice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take my own advice. I fail to take my own advice. It's like, um, <laughs> and I see it in my top students. And that's why they are the top students. Because one of the things, the great things about being a perfectionist is that you're diligent. You're going to work. You're going to put in the work. But sometimes um, it can make you reticent. Um, and, uh, it can even make you, um, procrastinate, you know, there are days where I'll make myself do it, where I'll dread doing LSAT because I don't want to get anything wrong and I'll just make myself do it anyway. But, you know, I need to approach it with, you know, tranquility and because that's not going to help the patterns that I established during my study will inevitably show up and manifest during, uh, the test taking, you know, if you inundate your head with negativity, that's, that's not good. <laughs> so you're right. It sounds like, you know, what you need to do. And I, I think we're there. And so my, my suggestion for you, my challenge for you, Chris, is okay. I want to meet with you again, again, in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, okay. I want you to get at least 100 questions wrong. <gasps> okay. Oh, Okay. If you got, if you did a hundred and got them all right, I, I know it's it's a terrifying idea, but at the it same is. time, did you, did, you, did you feel that energy? It's like I'm smiling and you get a hundred questions wrong. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's go for it. You know what you're doing. That's why I'm here, obviously, <laughs> because you're an expert. So, okay. What if you took the idea that every question you got wrong was an opportunity to learn something new? I'd feel a lot better. I, 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 I'd, uh, I'd feel liberated, actually. I know that sounds extreme, but I'd feel absolutely liberated. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's feasible. Yeah, it's, it's feasible to, to grow from this. So, yeah, I'm going to take that mindset. I'm going to switch it and say, you know, that's my thought process now. Love it. Thank you. Of course, Chris. We'll meet again in a couple of weeks, and I'll see you in class very soon. Okay, see you in class. Bye, thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.